Hello and welcome to video number five in this Getting Started series. My name is Dave Bradley-Jones. Thank you very much for spending some time with me today. Uh, today in this video, we're going to be looking at WebVT for admins, for administrators, darling. Yes, uh, this video is not for you if you're a WebVT presenter or user because you'll want the next video. Getting started number six. This is this video is really geared towards administrators for setting up users and certain settings so that when users come to use your WebVT, they have a wonderful experience. Now, if you've not subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, please do so. Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash playout one and subscribe there. That way, when we release new features, which we are constantly doing, you will receive the notification first and be treated like a VIP. I'll also give a plug to our Facebook page as well. If you haven't uh, checked us out on Facebook yet, facebook.com slash playout one. Okay, let's get to it then. Video number five in our Getting Started series, WebVT for admins. So we're going to talk about WebVT um, in a lot of detail. And where we're going to start first is setting up your users, uh, because without setting up user accounts, you can't really do too much. So we're going to go into our settings window here via the launcher. And we're going to go to the WebVT tab. Look at that. We're already there. Now, we've already got a couple of uh, pre-filled settings, thanks to Playout1 support when they set up your Playout1 Pro system. Uh, the WebVT import profile, this is the auto importer import profile that's going to be responsible for importing your voice tracks from your users. So WebVT classic kits, that's fine. Uh, process profile, this can be set up. Now, this is really clever. This is giving you the option to actually process voice tracks as they come in from the user using Stereo Tool. A couple of things here, you need to have a Stereo Tool uh, license. And then what we'll do is we'll set up a separate auto importer profile that processes that audio coming through it via Stereo Tool. So your uh, jocks, your presenters can have a bit of compression on there. Now it's, um, as I say, it's, it's, it's via Stereo Tool. You need to buy a Stereo Tool license. Uh, the standard license, the basic license is just fine. It's the same preset for all users. And you can find out how to set this up by going to help.playout1.com and just search for processing the microphone. And that will give you all the details you need. The next profile is the upload profile. And again, this is generally set to the same as the first one. This is for upload. So if you use WebVT to add audio, such as commercials, audio files, production, then this is the import profile that they will also go through. You can change this if you want to, but it's not a necessity. Now let's go to WebVT user administration here. Let's have a look at uh, how we add a user. So to add a user, we're going to hit the little plus button on the bottom here, bottom right. And we're going to start by giving a username to our user. So let's go and give myself one, shall we? I'm going to give myself the username Dave. Password is going to be Dave. Very secure. Full name. Oh, if we're going full name. There we are. A VT prefix. Now, this is really important. The VT prefix is a bit like the UID, but for voice tracks. So no two voice trackers can have the same VT prefix. This is a alpha numeric value, three digits. So let me see here. We tend to just go with VT and then the, the first letter of the username, VTD. That'll do. Uh, you can have VTF for Fred, VTA for Alf. VTS for Sarah, VTP for Patrick. It doesn't really matter. All you have to do is make sure that VT prefix is unique to every single voice tracker that you set up. And when the voice tracks come in, you'll see that their cart number starts with that VT prefix. So if you wanted to search for all David William Briley Jones's voice tracks, then you could search for VTD or you could just search for my name because the name actually appears on the voice tracks, as you'll see as we go forward. All right, let's take a look at some of the settings then. So right now we're looking at a multi-station, classic hits and more classic hits. That's why you can see here the two different tabs, more classic hits, permissions, classic hits, permissions. So let's have a look. Okay, so the first tab, 
is classic hits. And if I want to give myself access to classic hits, then I'm going to basically make sure this setting at the bottom here, enable this station for user is ticked. Once that's ticked, I can then start setting my permissions. So whether I have access to the media finder, the edit audio window, whether I can add audio, yes, please. Whether I have social media access, whether I can voice track, whether I have access to the on-air controls and whether I can access the whiteboard and edit it. Everybody can access the whiteboard. Only certain people can edit it. Now, there's also the settings above here, which allow you to restrict certain types and categories to the user. So if I tick the box here that says only allow access to selected types and categories below, I'm going to say to myself, do you know what, Dave? You know what? I just can't trust myself. I may throw in the odd Christmas song, even though Christmas is now, what, 12 months away. So I'm going to untick Christmas. That means I will not see any Christmas songs in the media finder, despite how hard I try. So that's what that does. Now, on more classic hits, do you know what? I've got nothing to do with more classic hits. So there, therefore, I'm going to untick that box. And that means I will see nothing to do with more classic hits when I log into WebVT. Once I've set up all the permissions, I can hit save. And then you can see, there we are. I am in the list. Now, if I want to edit a user, we just go and click the little pen icon here. And we can see the, uh, the details for the user. And if we want to delete a user, we can choose to click on them and then hit the trash can. Right now, I'm going to hit the close button and we're going to take a look at some other settings within this WebVT panel. Uh, the next one is the WebVT audit log. So here is a complete list of all the actions that have been taken on WebVT. You'll see failed logins, recordings, the whole lot. So useful to, uh, to track down a problem or just see what's going on, who's logging in at what time. Now, the next setting here, live stream, this is to do with live mic. When you're using live mic, which is our way of essentially broadcasting live through WebVT. So you can literally sit in your uh, living room in your pajamas and be live on the radio. It transmits your voice through the web browser and out the other end. And one of the options you have to monitor is the, the web feed, you know, the, the your standard internet stream. If you want to give users the option to monitor the web feed, then all you have to do is put in the live stream details here. And the way that you do that is you just go and get the URL that you gave to TuneIn or any other service and you paste it in here. That way you can then listen to your station through the live mic system. So if we go to, uh, I'm going to put the my details in here. So it's playout1 streaming.com 8000. That's mine there. Okay, moving down the list, what else have we got? We've got the option to set the WebVT logo. Now, by default, the WebVT logo is taken from the general tab and the little logo that you've got here. Now, if you're in a multi-station environment, you may not want that logo going onto your WebVT front page because you perhaps want to replace it with a corporate logo. So this is where you can change that. You've also got options here to don't show the logo, disable on-air controls globally, and also a button here to edit the station whiteboard. So this is where we can actually edit the station whiteboard. So we can do winning Sunday script instead. Excellent. Finally, in this page, we've got the option to reset the duck. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you're using live mic, you've got options on the panel to actually duck the volume of Playout One. That way you can speak over a bed that you fired off a quick key or speak over the intro of a song. And when you press the duck button, it's like a little virtual fader within Playout One ducks. Now, for whatever reason, computers and browsers, if that crashes, your duck volume may be stuck at minus 15 or whatever it was. So if you do hear that the volume is a little low, check this option here and just hit the reset duck button to reset it back to zero. So those are the WebVT settings within Playout 1. Let's go save that. Now let's go take a look at some of the admin settings within WebVT itself. So I've got my WebVT login page here. And when we set Playout 1 up for you, the default username is admin and the password will have been sent to you so that you can change it. So I've changed mine from the default and I'm going to log in now. And when you log in as admin, you've got all the permissions. Um, one thing we're going to do, first of all, is go to the launcher and we're going to go to settings here. 
Now, the global settings that you can set within this window are the following. So first of all, you have the option to set either 12 hour or 24 hour time for all your users. Um, I've set mine to 12 hour, so you can see the AM PM down the side of the log there for the times. And then across the top, the hour jump buttons have the little A and the little P after them. You've also got the option in here to update WebVT. So for example, if uh, we release a new version and you want to update it, you have to log in as the admin and hit the update WebVT button here. You cannot access this button from any other user account. So you have to log in as the admin. Finally, let's go to the admin page here because there's a couple of other things we need to set. One is your WebVT URL. Now, this is really important for LiveMic. Let me talk about LiveMic for a second and how it works. LiveMic allows a user to, if they have permission, broadcast live, send their, their microphone, i.e. mine now, through the web browser and out the other end to the studio so they can do a live show. Now, there are some caveats to that. First of all, we have to have the LiveMic app running. And that comes in the form of Playout One Studio Monitor. We're going to touch on that in just a second. So that has to be running. Two, you have to have a trusted SSL certificate. What, what on earth do you mean, Dave? What's a trusted SSL certificate? Okay. So as you can see on the top bar there, I've got HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash dbj.webvt.net. That's one of our SSL certificates. We can supply that to you as part of your monthly subscription. And that's a trusted SSL certificate. You don't have to get it from us. The advantages of getting it from us means that we manage it, we'll install it for you, and we'll look after it for you. However, you can go to GoDaddy, uh, Fasthost, any other place that sells SSL certificates, and you can install your own. That's not a problem. You have to have one of these trusted SSL certificates, though. If you don't, and you have a self-signed certificate, which is what we will have installed for you if you don't have one of our trusted SSL certificates, then you can't use LiveMic, unfortunately, because it requires one of these trusted SSLs. So long and short of it is, if you want to use LiveMic, you are gonna to have to have a trusted SSL. You can tell if you've got a trusted SSL because when you log on to WebVT for the first time, if you haven't got one, you'll get this horrible security warning. Whoa, this page isn't secure. It's gonna steal all your details. Don't go here. Uh, with a trusted SSL certificate, that page goes away. So really, really important to note here. If you want to use LiveMic, you've got to have a trusted SSL certificate for your radio station. Anyway, back to this. When you've got your trusted SSL, you'll have a URL. So mine is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash dbj.webvt.net. So we've set that in there. Your WebVT API key, this will be generated automatically. However, if it's not, just click the little, uh, little uh, what do we call that, refresh button? Yeah, I guess so. And that will insert a WebVT API key. That's also needed for live mic. Finally, you may want to set the voice track next note. This is so users don't have to scroll through the log when finding where to voice track. They can just click the arrows in the uh, voice tracker. All you need to do is tell WebVT what the notes start with. So as you can see in my log just behind there, all my notes start with presenter link. And then afterwards we put whatever we want. So presenter link here, presenter link short, presenter link long. So just make sure in this little section here, you have inserted some form of text if you want to enable that feature. So those are the settings within WebVT for admins. I'm going to come out of here now. We're just going to minimize this for a second, and we're just going to take a look at how LiveMic works. So LiveMic, if set up for your station, will have been done by one of our Playout One engineers. And the way it works is you have this little app here running called Studio Monitor going to open up Studio Monitor here. It has a number of functions. It's mainly designed to run away from Playout One Monitor. So let's pretend you have a server and you have a couple of studio machines and you want to monitor other processes running on those studio machines. Well, Monitor by default can only monitor applications running on the same PC it's running on. Studio Monitor, though, allows you to monitor apps on other machines, and then it can feed the details back to Main Monitor. We'll cover this off in the final video, video number seven, uh, which talks all about Monitor. But that's what Studio Monitor is. And one of the sections within here is the WebVT Live Mic. Now, these details are automatically pulled in from the admin pages, as we've just seen. So there's our API key. There's our WebVT URL. 
and you can hit launch here to start the live mic control. Uh, there's an option here to automatically launch live mic on startup. I, I very much recommend having that ticked. And then you've got two options here. The studio, which is the, the send back to the DJ. This is going to be effectively the, the return from your mixer uh, so the DJ can hear the, the output of play out one. Or you can actually use a virtual audio cable, as we will have set up for you perhaps, and that will be taking the feed from the WebVT live mic device. This WebVT live mic device is essentially an accumulation of all the players, all the quick keys, and it can basically combine that into a virtual audio cable that then gets transmitted back to the DJ, the presenter, the jock. Finally, the presenter jock feed, the receive feed we're receiving from them, you'll want to select a sound card output. This is the audio that basically is going to be pumped out on the air. So you may want to select your speakers. You may want to select, you know, channel one, channel two, whatever it is. I'm going to choose virtual audio cable B. That way the audio comes out of live mic and then is broadcast over the air and on your radio station. So when a user connects, you'll see this light up and it will say connected. If another user tries to connect whilst uh, another user is connected, they will receive a pop-up box saying, hey, hold on, this person's in control. Are you sure you want to boot them off? If they hit yes, then it will boot them off. And the user that was broadcasting will receive a message box that says, you've been booted off by dun 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 and then the name of the person that booted them off so that's live mic as i say most of this will be all set up for you by our play out one engineers but i just wanted to give you a little overview in case for whatever reason you get users saying i can't use live mic make sure that the live mic application is running first and if you're still having problems then you can certainly email support at playout1.com. So that concludes this video, WebVT for admins. We're going to look next at WebVT for users. How do we use WebVT? How do we use live mic? How do we voice track? That sort of thing. So for now, I will see you on the next video. And as I say, if you have any questions or feedback, please email support at playout1.com.